This is the solution to quiz two. So the first exercise says construct a concavity chart and find any points of inflection. Okay, the first step is to find the natural domain. Because the natural domain is, uh, because f is a polynomial, the natural domain is all reals. The second step is to find the first derivative. So that would be x cubed plus 6x squared minus 36x plus 11. And now we need, because we just computed a derivative, we need to check if there was any change in the domain. And because f is a polynomial, there was no change. This expression can be evaluated at any x, so there's no change. 3. Now we need to consider the second derivative. So the second derivative is 3x squared plus 12x minus 36. And because we're going to do further work with the second derivative, I'll go ahead and take the time to simplify it now. I can see that 3 is common, so 3 factored out, and then that would be x squared plus 4x minus 12. And then surely that quadratic factors a little further. Two numbers whose product is negative 12 and whose sum is positive 4. So how about x plus 6 and x minus 2? So we computed the second derivative, and besides simplifying it a little bit, the first thing we need to do is check if there was a change in the domain. But again, because f is a polynomial, there's no change. No new breaks in the domain. Uh, besides br breaks in the domain, we also need to find places where the second derivative is 0. But because of the work that we did simplifying the second derivative equal to 0, it's clear that that occurs exactly when x is negative 6 or x is 2. So in all of these four positions, so here, we were seeing if we were going to find any x's that we needed to plot in the concavity chart. And because there's no breaks in the natural domain, we found nothing. We computed the first derivative and then checked to see if there were any breaks and we found nothing. We computed the second derivative to see if there were any breaks and we found nothing. And then finally, we found these two. So just two points to plot in the chart. So the concavity chart. two points, negative 6 and 2. <coughs> Select some test points. How about negative 7, 1, and 3? We're going to take these test points. We're going to plug them into the simplified version of the second derivative. <clears throat> so 3 is always positive, 
so positive. And then if we plug in negative 7, that factor is negative. And if we plug in negative 7, that factor is negative. 3 is always positive, so positive. If we plug 1 into that factor, that's positive. And if we plug 1 into that factor, that's negative. 3 is always positive, so positive. Plugging 3 into that factor is positive, and plugging 3 into that factor is positive. So the overall SIGN in the leftmost region is positive, and positive people are smiling. So the positive concavity symbol looks like a smile. The overall sign in the middle region is negative, and negative people are frowning. So the concavity symbol looks like a frowny face. And then, again, positive concavity. <clears throat> so that's the chart. And then we can make a conclusion about the points of inflection. So everywhere that there is a change in concavity and a tangent line is called a point of inflection. So here's a change in concavity. And because the first derivative is defined everywhere, that means that there is a tangent line at negative 6. So that means there is a point of inflection at negative 6. Similarly, at 2. <clears throat> Find and classify all stationary points using the second derivative test. OK, so let's find the stationary points. That is to say, we want to find where the derivative of h is 0. So the derivative of h is negative 5x squared minus 15x plus 90. Simplifying this, I can see that negative 5 can be factored out. So negative 5x squared plus 3x. And then that would be minus 18. So now to find two numbers whose product is negative 18 and whose sum is 3. <clears throat> so that would be x plus 6 multiplied by x minus 3. <clears throat> so to solve the derivative equal to 0, that's the same as saying x is negative 6 or x is 3. And we were instructed to use the second derivative test to classify. So classify. Well, We'll need to compute the second derivative. We could, we could compute the derivative of any one of these three, but this one is the easiest, so I'll use that one. So the second derivative would be negative 10 x and then uh, minus 15. I can factor out negative 5 to get negative 5 multiplied by 2x <coughs> plus 3. So to classify these at negative 6, the second derivative evaluated at negative 6 would be negative 5 multiplied by negative 12 plus 3. So this is negative times negative, And that's all that I need to know is that it's positive, which means that this is a, that negative 6 is a stationary point. 
where positive concavity occurs. So there's a horizontal tangent. at the same time as positive concavity. And as a result, x is negative 6 is a relative, is a local min. And for x is 3, the second derivative evaluated at 3 is negative 5 multiplied by uh, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3, so 6 plus 3. So that's a negative number times a positive number, which is negative, which is all that we need to know. So that means that 3 is a stationary point where there is negative concavity. So this is negative 6, and this is 3. And as a result, <coughs> we know that x is 3 is a local max. <coughs> and the last exercise. So part A is a straightforward power rule. So that's, oops. That's x to 9 divided by 9 plus a constant. This second one can be rewritten just a little bit to help you use the power rule correctly. So this would be 6x to negative 2 divided by negative 2 plus a constant. And then this one needs to be simplified a little bit. So x cubed over x squared is x. And then minus 10x over x squared is 10 over x. Both of these terms we know the antiderivative for. So this would be x squared over 2 minus 10 log absolute value of x plus a constant.